everybody. Good afternoon. So I've been working with Swisscom for the last 10 years. And Swisscom has been a member, a very active member of the Cloud Foundry Foundation since the very beginning of it. So personally, at the end of the 90s, I was part of a team in a big enterprise doing financial services based in Zurich and providing internally application platforms based on open source components. Um, so there I encountered and solved problems like everybody else in the world was also doing. And we solved exactly the same problems, but independently. Today I have something very similar in mind, but taking a totally different approach, a community approach. We have been observing companies, every enterprise company, to become software companies in recent years, right? So rather than be talking about modern application architecture, we should instead talk about cloud-native application platforms, because that's where we all want to be, right? That's what we all need. So, additionally, we are at the dawn of a new era. So, everybody's carrying supercomputers in his pockets. Sometimes they even work to make phone calls. Pretty soon, we're going to drive supercomputers down the highway, and some of you maybe are already doing it. Chips become cheaper and cheaper. Displays, sensors, they become cheaper and cheaper, and they end up everywhere. And wherever you have a, such devices and internet connections, you want those to access your apps in the cloud. So, as a consequence, people's or humans' behavior is changing. You know that everybody knows that. So, this change, this should entail a shift of uh, business matching the shift in human behavior. Companies which are not able to deliver information or business opportunities in due time, in the context where you happen to be, they're going to have serious problems in the near future. So until, or let's say for the last 20 years, business schools were telling their students that in order to be successful, they should try to achieve a sustainable business advantage. They should try to have some unique advantage over the competition to be successful. Now, the same business school in the last three years or so, they have been saying things are changing so quickly that it is not feasible anymore to try to achieve a sustainable competition advantage. So where should we take the companies? Where should we go in order to be successful? And we need to come to a concept of continuous innovation. Sounds like Agile, right? So please raise your hands. Who is working in an enterprise which does Agile development? Some. And keep your hands up, those who, in addition to doing Agile development, also do continuous deployments. 
one, two, some still, but clearly less. So most of the people who would um, lower their hands on the second question, they are living in a world of agile development from design to programming. But then when it comes to deliver your IT into the, the IT delivery, they batch then their deliveries into a schedule every six to eight weeks until they, these assets are put into production. So whoever is doing that, you are in kind of a situation we would call the water scrum fall. So how do we get out of that water scrum fall? There is a clear way. If we achieve to pair cloud native applications, of which we have been hearing a lot during the whole day today, we can pair this with a continuous delivery of business value. Then we get a practical set of tools which enables us and enables companies to do exactly what business schools have been telling us to do um, recently, namely continuous innovation. Then we will drag the companies over to continuous innovation. This uh, continuous innovation and the fact that every company has become a software company recently, this um, entails an enormous pressure on the software industry and uh, asks or, or gives the desire to have open projects and open components. And open source is a very good answer to this pressure, right? Because ultimately, Companies need to reduce the cost of their parts which make up their whole environment on which they build, they build their businesses. And this will also be the basis which brings us from the existing old way of doing IT to the newer modern one. Bringing these components, bringing these bits into a data center is what we call making up a stack. And all layers of the stack can be open. Hardware can be open using open uh, compute. Open NFV, it was, gives you network virtualization. Then with open daylight, you do STN, open stack, Zen. Linux, Cloud Foundry, Docker, Node, all the way up. These are examples of products, open products, which make all the pieces of your stack. And what you need in this whole stack is a harmony among these products. You need a way for these products to work nicely, to collaborate. And what we, do we do that for? Because on top of that, we want to be able to run our microservices. That's the only goal for why we are doing this stack. By the way, microservices are great. Martin Fowler says, Fowler says that they lead to specific, very useful requirements. For example, rapid provisioning you want to, base, to be able to spin up basic infrastructure pieces like compute, network, and storage within minutes or even less, not days or weeks. You want basic monitoring. You want a constant flow of data which enables you to know about the internals of your services and applications and which gives you an overall state of your whole system. You want rapid application deployment. 
continuous deployment, not only continuous integration, because again, you don't want to be in the water scrum fall. And enabling the whole thing is possible through people. People is, you can't have any tools to replace them, to do what they do. And this is the DevOps culture, DevOps culture that you introduce in your organization. Uh, additionally, this economic pressure, this cost pressure, will, um, will drive the desire to have certain components, certain uh, functionalities, certain technologies to be brought in an open source uh, context. For example, containers. We have heard about them, Docker, Rocket or tools for doing the automation, like Puppet, Ansible, and Chef, or cluster management, like Apache, Mesos, or Kubernetes. But now, think about these technologies. Think about the effort it takes to understand and handle and, and know how to handle them, all these technolo technologies that you have at your hands. And also think about your own IT organizations in companies and the, ask yourself the question about the amount of complexity they might or might not able, be able to handle in order to give you this nice platform, this nice environment you want to be able to run your, your uh, microservices in. So, the companies ultimately have a need for a cloud-native application platform. A cloud-native application platform is something which gives you all that, which, um, which works with everything else, which is can be integrated into every environment, which gives you the nines, gives you the availability, which, is, uh, um, which can be operated in a well-defined way and gives you the ability to run your microservices applications. Cloud Foundry is a cloud-native application platform. Well, at its heart, now we are becoming very philosophical, at its heart, a Cloud Foundry is a place of practice for continuous innovation. Think about foundries, which used to be places where you could build, you could manufacture meaningful objects or products and where people could share time, experience, and material with other artisans. A place of practice. It's about bricklaying to make a wall. So if you want to do something, you need to start practicing. You need to do it and start doing it correctly. And continuous innovation, a cathedral, this is not only about, only about bricklaying, not only about walls. It's more about achieving something much more amazing, much more bigger, like continuous innovation. So we, Cloud Foundry, we give you the technology to create the place, and we assemble the wisdom of the community to create the practices. Let's dive now briefly into the details or into the insights of, uh, of this Cloud Foundry. Um, on the top, most importantly, you have the users. They will come to you from every direction. They use browsers of different form factors, mobile. They use a whole series of devices. 
wherever there is an internet connection, they are going to try to hit you. And also very critical at the bottom is the infrastructure. There is a whole choice of infrastructure like Amazon, Google, or Microsoft Azure, OpenStack, VMware, uh, DigitalOcean, and so on. There is an amazing innovation going on in this bottom layer of the stack. And now what you put in between, into the middle, what you offer your company where you can then run your microservices in, this has to adapt nicely into what's above and what's below. It has to be open above and open below. There is three parts of the Cloud Foundry. There is first the runtime. That's where you run your applications. You deploy and run them. And you update them, you version them, you do whatever you need to do with your applications. Secondly, services. This is some out-of-the-box capabilities layer. Uh, for example, think of a Java application, Java web application, which you run in a stateless way, so you don't store any state, any persistency directly in the application, but you need to rely on some services underneath, where you, for example, can use RyXCS or MySQL in order to do your persistency or access some, some uh, message queues. This is the standard services. Secondly, in the services layer, you have provider-specific services. For example, uh, Cloud Foundry is part of IBM's Bluemix offering, just to give you an example. And IBM has its services called Watson. This is very specific to IBM. So the possibility to inject provider-specific services into your Cloud Foundry and build your microservices using them in the standard programming layer, in the standard programming fabric, en enables you to take provider-specific ideas into your apps, use them, but still uh, remain compatible. And then user-provided services is, we all know that enterprises are built up of tons of IT assets. And using user-provided services, you are able to build your microservices and injecting the distributed services that are already existing in an enterprise. And the third part, operations, that's where we have to win the hearts and minds of IT administrators. Logging, scaling, scaling up, scaling down, releases, releasing resources that you don't need anymore. Or platform deployment, let's say you need N units of this server and M units of that server in order to cope with the load and health monitoring, so ensuring that your system is going to behave consistently and stay in a desired state. Currently, one important thing we are doing is refactoring a part of the Cloud Foundry runtime in a project called Diego, which will very soon allow users not only to run apps based on build packs, but also using containers like Docker and Rocket. So, many things have been said. To close the whole thing, let me talk about the, the, the most important thing about what is the motivation for us, for the foundation, to invest so much effort into the Cloud Foundry open source project. First, because it's ubiquitous. So 
There is Cloud Foundry running everywhere. It's based on open source. You can run it yourselves. The second promise is that it's portable. So when you are starting to create your applications, you don't know sufficient, you don't know enough about the future. You don't know where you are going to run your workloads. So you need some higher level of abstraction in order to be able to take your workloads from one provider going to a second provider. And lastly, it should be interoperable, so it would allow ISVs to give users, to give customers an iOS kind of experience that by clicking on one tile, you would be able to, um, to induce the deployment of a whole set of services throughout your whole data center. That's where we want to go. That's where we want to bring the world to. And I invite you to join us. We are a Linux Foundation collaborative project. We are open source. We believe in it. We are very passionate about it. Um, feel free to contact me directly or check us out on cloudfoundry.org. Thank you. <laughs>